At this point, we've clarified that distance is a scalar quantity and displacement is a vector quantity. Let's dig a little more into that to see what it really means to us. And let's start off with an example. Consider three hikers. They start out at a campsite and are supposed to meet at Commando Bay for lunch. Jacob decides to swim directly across to Commando Bay, 500 meters. Emily hikes along the beach to get to the bay, and this route is 800 meters. Austin takes his mountain bike along a one kilometer trail through the forest, that is 1,000 meters. Now these numbers represent their distance covered. Since distance doesn't relate to any direction, every meter covered counts towards their total distance. Some of their distance takes them towards the bay and some doesn't, like Austin here actually goes away from the bay as the trail takes them over a bridge. It all counts as part of the distance. Displacement, on the other hand, has us just looking at the most direct route from the start to the end. For all three of them, the displacement would be exactly the same. That is, 500 meters east. The vector arrow representing their displacement is this. Jacob is the only one whose distance matches the magnitude of his displacement. This is because he went directly to the bay. Again, for displacement, we show both magnitude and direction, as displacement is a vector quantity. Another example. You're watching a soccer game and you want to get to the opposite corner of the field to say hi to a friend. A game is starting, so you elect to walk around the outside of the field. Now, by walking around the field, you walk a total of 150 meters, 100 meters over and 50 meters down. Therefore, your distance for the trip is 150 meters. No direction, just magnitude. On the other hand, the displacement is from your starting point directly to your ending point. The vector arrow would look like this. And we would say that the displacement is 112 meters diagonally across the field. Again, distance is scalar and just has magnitude, 150 meters. But displacement is a vector. It has both magnitude and direction. Now, in the previous example, the direction we gave was east. In this situation, the direction could be diagonally across the field. And indeed, there's lots of ways of specifying a direction. Directions can be north, south, east, west. They could be northeast, southwest, as well as upstream, downstream. You could say up and down, whatever signifies a direction. In some cases, in fact, we just indicate direction using positives and negatives. We'll take a look at an example of this in the next video. In this tutorial, we looked at a couple examples to better understand the difference between distance, a scalar quantity, and displacement, a vector quantity. We saw that distance includes all the steps involved in getting to another location, while displacement is just the most direct route there from the beginning to the end, or the difference in position from the beginning to the end. We also talked about the various ways that direction can be described when dealing with a vector quantity like displacement.